Hey everyone, Bradley Jack Design here with another design breakdown, this time my Shaquille O'Neal graphic from my 360 day project. Through this breakdown, I'm going to show you all of these glass layers, how I was able to get this distortion effect, how I was able to cut out this net pretty easily, um, and then other editing effects that I use within this design. So in all of my designs to start off, we need to start off with a background. So down here under the background, you're going to see a lot of the same assets I've used in other designs. So I've got this vignette sort of grungy looking texture layer. On top of that, I've got a photo of the Staples Center. On top of that, I put the same vignette just to add a little darkness to it. And then on top of that, I have a gradient map with dark purple to purple. So it's just a little bit of texture of the Lakers uh, Staples Center arena um, for the background. Next, I added all of the text. No need to show you how to add text out there. It's good to know when you're making a design in general. A lot of people ask me about typography. Make sure you have a lot of contrast in size of how things are. A lot of designs out there, they might have everything the same size. If you add contrast to how big or small something is, it really goes a long way with your designs. To that, I added uh, this same um, vignette on top of it, set to black and white, just to add a little bit of texture on top of the text on here itself. And then I have this levels layer to sort of brighten up the middle. It's just set to screen, and I just sort of painted in the middle a little bit just to brighten up the middle of the design. So now we have Shaq. So in order to clip him out and put him in, uh, you can check out my video on how to clip a athlete out from the background. Here's what I did after I clipped him out. So you can see this looks really weird, and you can see the purple behind him. That's because if you double click on this layer, under the blending options, if it says blend if gray, if you use this layer and drag over this left cursor, uh, what you can see it does is it basically gets rid of anything that is that color black. So this is all transparent and doesn't exist anymore and it's only showing anything here over. So really it gets rid of all of the black in the net and all of the black up here. So this is an easy way if you have a photo that has heavily contrasted white on black like a net or a tennis racket you can just click this and then look it's already cut out and then all you really have to do is make a secondary layer of this without the blending mode and just paint back in some of those dark spots that need to be on the player itself I also put back this camera that's up here taking photos and video so that's an easy way to combat any sort of net or any sort of tennis racket if there's a black background behind it. Just a little tidbit on there. On top of this, I added actually a gradient map with the Lakers purple and the Lakers yellow and then a dark purple. I did this and I have it set to normal at 30%. I just wanted to add a little bit of a color cast to this shack photo. So it sort of blends into the background. It doesn't look like it sticks out like a sore thumb because we're adding a little bit of a color cast to it. So then we've got signature I put here down at the bottom. Um, I actually have on here two additional layers. Actually, I'll show you these in a little bit because they're a little off and I'll show you why. So this is the graphic we have. Uh, the next thing I would do is actually put the glass layers on top. So this is a heck of a lot of layers. So what this is, essentially, if I ungroup one of these, it's two glass layers. Uh, set to color dodge and color dodge. If I turn them off and turn them on, you can see they're just adding a little bit of effect to it. Um, let me see something on here because I have a suspicion. Okay, they're not. So these are actually the same layers. This glass and glass copy too. This is just a secondary copy set to screen at 50%. So it's actually screening all of the layers. So what I did for all of these glass layers is they're all set to color dodge. Pretty sure, yeah, see 100% color dodge, 100% color dodge. The reason they're set to color dodge is because it maintains this sort of purple color or the color behind it instead of a pure white. So it sort of gives a more realistic glass texture because the glass wouldn't be pure white, it would be whatever the background is on it. So you can see here it's yellow and here it's purple. So these are all just a bunch of different glass files I found online. If I open one of these up as a smart object, I can show you what they are. So here's this. Um, just image of broken glass. So I used this one mainly here towards the top smaller and then I probably just took the bigger, the, took the exact same one, blew it up 
So it was showing bigger pieces down here at the bottom because hypothetically the glass would be closer to you on there. So I don't need to go into all of these. I masked out some of it just so there wasn't too much glass. Um, but essentially I've got two of these glass layers on top. One has everything set to color dodge and this one is the whole group set to screen at 50% which just fills in a little bit more of that white on the texture. So above that, I'm gonna talk about these in a little bit. So whenever I do anything where I'm going to use a displacement map, I like to create the design first, put the glass on top of it, and actually what you're going to do then is make a layer that's black and save out this file um, as a distortion file. So you just save it as a PSD, name it whatever you want, um, because we're gonna use this later for the displacement map. I'm gonna talk about this in a different video on displacement maps, I just wanted to bring it up now. Uh, the reason being, if I turn on this layer, this is the layer with Shack with the displacement on it. So you can see in certain areas, like around the nine, um, it's displacing him on here. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click displace. I do 10 and 10, you can do five and five. Basically it's gonna move things down and to the right depending on what these are set to. I'm gonna hit okay and I need to find this shack displace. So I have the shack graphic displace. So it has to be a PSD file. When you hit okay, it'll make a displacement. Now the displacement should look the same. Yeah, it didn't do anything. Uh, but you can see this is what it looked like before. This is what it looked like after. So after, so it moved everything down into the right 10 pixels. So with this distorted, I have the glass on top of it. That way the glass can not be distorted itself, but it's the one that you see the distortion through. So on top of this layer, I have this layer actually duplicated. And then I set a radial blur with noise and I have that displaced as well. So basically I'm taking the displaced layer, I'm adding noise to it, and then I'm adding a radial blur that is set to zoom. And that reason being is it sort of adds a little bit of a zoom in effect, uh, like you're coming into the graphic itself. And then I've painted out most of the middle of that and masked it out, so it's really just the edge. And that's why I have this signature file, or the signature folder, I have it displaced down a little bit, and these are just set to screen at 50% and normal, so there's a little bit of a glow on the signature itself. Um, with everything distorted, I set the same radial blur to the glass layers. I just saved it out as a smart object. Uh, this one's set to color dodge at 70, this one's set to screen, so color dodge and screen, a combination of both. I did this to blur the um, glass because these bottom layers down here with Shaq don't have the glass blur so I wanted to make it more realistic so I'm blurring the glass in this as well and then after that I mean it's the top layers that we have on here so I have a lens dirt effect on top of it as you can see it sort of makes it look like you're looking through a camera that has some dirt on it it adds a little bit of more realism to the graphic uh, I have a gradient map layer that you can see is the same gradient map I put on Shaq before. It's got the Lakers purple and the Lakers yellow. And I've got that set to soft light at 25%. Play around with these blending modes and get to know them. Um, they can really do a lot for your designs. I have a color lookup, the 2395, which sort of uh, washes out everything a little bit. I only have it set to 60%. But then to combat that, I have a curves layer. Um, and actually, no, this curves layer is a little different than what I'm normally doing. This curves layer, uh, I've taken the red and I've dropped it down a little bit around here and up a bit. And basically what I'm doing is I'm adding in a little bit more green and taking out a little bit of the orange. So it just sort of, this is a different way of color correcting. I took down the purple amount and it's more blue now. Um, so this is the final file. So really this design is a background, it's got text on top of it, a cutout of Shaq. I took that and I put it together as a smart object and then uh, displaced it using a displacement map. The displacement map is that glass layer with the black below it. Those have to be black and white. I duplicated that layer, added a radial blur with some noise and painted back in around the edges of it to add a little bit of a blur. 
And then I did the same thing for the glass layers and then added a couple layers up at the top to have a uh, color lookup gradient map and just some effects over the whole graphic itself. I hope this taught you a lot on a little bit of the process behind how I make some of my graphics. If you want another breakdown that I haven't done yet, let me know in the comments. Other than that, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks.